Mm. So, uh, good afternoon and welcome everyone. So, let's begin. And the first thing to do in the beginning is to set our motivation. This is the most important thing. Now, what we are trying to do here is uh, perhaps to have an understanding, even if it is in um, well, something that we study in a limited uh, amount of time, just a few verses, because you must keep in, in mind that to study something in great depth, in great length, this will require quite a long time. But the important thing here is to understand that you have a great opportunity to place imprints. And as you place imprints in your mind, Gisha says, I have every hope. And um, I expect that there will be some time in the future where all all those imprints will be activated. Therefore, there must be some benefit, at least for um, a number of people in this class. The most important thing here to keep in mind is that we don't want to waste our time. We want to make sure that this becomes a Dharma activity. So by setting the motivation right at the beginning, everything else will follow as it should be. So please set up your motivation properly. All right, so we have um, started here with our study of um, awareness and cognition, and we have seen that we have a sevenfold classification beginning with the direct perceivers, the inferential, co subsequent awareness, correct assuming awareness, awareness to which the object appears but is not ascertained. We have doubt and we have wrong awareness. So we have the sevenfold classification. From the sevenfold classification, we have started with number one, which is the direct perceivers. Again, within direct perceivers, we know that we have further classifications. We have the fourfold classification that begins with sense direct perceivers. Number two is mental direct perceivers. Number three is self-knowing um, perceivers, direct perceivers, and then we have the yogic direct perceivers. So from these four, we have completed the first one, the sense direct perceiver, and the second one, which is the mental direct perceiver. So we have the remaining two, the self-knowing and the yogic direct perceivers. Today, we will start dealing with self-knowing direct perceivers. Okay, so when we talk about self-knowing or self-knowing awareness, self-knowing direct perceiver and so forth, the important thing to understand is that not all the schools accept them. There are some schools who do not accept the existence of um, self-knowing uh, perception. And so who are those schools? First of all, the Great Exposition School does not accept. Uh, the self-knowers. Secondly, from the mind-only school, those who are followers of scriptures, they do not accept. Uh, thirdly, from the middle way autonomy, the followers of sutra, they do not accept. And lastly, the middle way consequence school also does not accept uh, self-knowers. Okay, so these are the schools or sub-schools who do not accept them. So who who are the ones who talk about um, self-knowers? First of all, the sutra school, from the then the other sub-school of the mind only, who are followers of reasons. Uh, then we have the other sub-school of the middle way autonomy school. So that's, you know, that's who accepts them and that's who does not accept them. Mm -hmm. So we have seen that actually we have three schools or sub-schools who accept the existence of self-knowers. Now, amongst those who accept that self-knowing awareness exists, actually their presentation is more or less the same. We don't find any substantial difference. You could almost say it is the same. Those who accept that, that things exist, that they describe it, they say it exists in this and this way, in the same way. So if we explain it, this actually covers all the schools who accept it. Okay, so let's uh, look first of all at the name. We talk about self-knower. So if something is a self-knower is... Uh, 
a self knower that is a direct perceiver. And if something is self knower, direct perceiver is a self knower. So you could say that these two, um, you know, we're going to alternate between these uh, terms. And most probably we're going to use the shortest one, okay, the self knower. Okay. So when you have the term here that says self knower, what is the self? refer to self nowhere it knows the self okay so the self here uh, describes awareness okay so it's something that knows awareness and awareness is something which is internal so something which knows internal awareness so the self refers to internal awareness awareness is internal and then you can say that we have an other nowhere so self nowhere other nowhere where the other here refers to something which is external such as for example form and so forth so something which is external and is a substance that is different from the internal awareness is called the other we have the self which is inner awareness and we have the other that is external form and something like this, something other, something external. So here we're talking about a self-knower that knows internal awareness. So in that sense, you could say that consciousness is divided into two, the self-awareness, -know self like the self-knower, and the other knower. All right, so, you know, as we say, we have uh, those schools who talk about self-knower. So it is important to understand uh, how did they come to the point of saying there is such a thing as a self-knower? You know, you have to justify, why do I have a self-knower? What does this self-knower do, after all? Okay, so they say that when it comes to external objects, we have many types of consciousness that is observing external objects for example they have uh, we have the eye faculty or the eye sense power we have uh, sense, uh, sense awareness we have mental awareness and they're all observing those external objects okay so you have awareness what is that awareness observing it's observing an external object such as for example form isn't it so if you have uh, um, eye sense awareness apprehending form, what is this awareness apprehending? What is it looking at? It's looking at form. Okay, so the question is, is someone actually looking at this awareness who is looking at form? And the answer to that is that yes, the self-knower is a type of awareness that instead of looking outside at form and so forth, is actually looking at awareness. So this answers the questions. What the question, what does the self-knower look is looking at? What is it apprehending? So it is looking at, it's observing awareness itself. So this is the self-knower. Hmm. Okay, so we say that we have awareness, so let's say, apprehending form. And the question was, uh, who sees or who knows this awareness? And we say the self-knower knows this awareness. Okay, and then there is one final question to settle here. Okay, so the self-knowing awareness is awareness itself. So is someone observing, is someone seeing the self-knowing awareness? So the answer to that is no. We don't need to posit another awareness that is seeing the self-awareness, right? The self-knower. Why? Because ultimately, the ultimate meaning of self in the term self-knower refers to itself, okay? So we defined, previously defined self as awareness so it is looking at another awareness however ultimately self means it also looks at its own self it looks at its own self it apprehends its own self therefore it is a self-knower 
And because it knows itself, it apprehends itself, it doesn't need another awareness to come and look at it and apprehend it. It is like this. Here, when we use the term look at itself or apprehend itself, it doesn't mean it realizes, okay? It looks, it apprehends, not necessarily realize. So just understand this self in the self-knower. Self can be not, uh, can be understood in two ways. It can be understood as awareness, which is a little bit further than itself, or it can actually refer to itself, which is the final meaning, the, the final self. Okay, so what happens here, as you can see, is we have two ways of exp explaining the self-knower. One is to understand that self here means that it knows itself. And the other way is that it, from amongst um, in externally looking ex at external objects or internal awareness, it is looking at internal awareness. So we have two ways of explaining the self-knower. So what happens here is we say that every time you have awareness, you have consciousness um, experiencing something, observing something, together with that, simultaneously with that, you have the self-knower who is experiencing this awareness. And these two things are not different in substance, meaning they are same substance, they are same nature, they have the same identity, and that means that they are produced, they abide, and they cease together. So when, let's say, the sense direct perceiver is generated, at the same time, together with this, the self-knower of that thing is generated. For however long it abides, the self-knower will also abide. And when that ceases, also the self-knower at that point will cease. Okay, so let's say that we have um, a sense direct perceiver apprehending form. Because it's apprehending form, is actually looking at form. And form is something which is an external entity, isn't it? And for this reason, the sense direct perceiver apprehending form is called awareness looking outwards, isn't it? It's facing outwards, it's looking outwards. Whilst the self-knower is called awareness that is looking inwardly. It's looking inwardly because it's looking at the direct perceiver who is looking outside, isn't it? So this is this is the this is what we have. We have something that is looking outwardly, and then we have something that is looking inwardly at the awareness that is looking outwardly. So the one that is looking inwardly is called the self uh, for the self knower. Okay, so let's make an example here to illustrate this. So imagine that you have a ball that is made out of glass and uh, half of it, okay, half of it is white uh, or clear glass and the other half is black. All right, because it's all made of glass, you cannot say that they are different substances. They are actually the same substance and the same nature. They are, they are both, both of those things are glass. But the white part, uh, you know, it has eyes and it's looking outwardly. It's looking outside. What does the black part do? The black part is looking, is looking at two things. It's looking at the white and it's also looking at itself. So that black part that is looking at the white and it's looking at itself is a good example of the self-knower and the whole glass ball together is a good example of how the two are generated together. Now, the example that we find in the text is the example of having a, a dark house. There are many objects in the house, but it's dark. And then you lit a lamp in the house. So the light that comes out of this lamp illuminates the whole house. So the light actually illuminates every object in that house. 
whereas before it was dark, you couldn't see it. So this, the light that illuminates all the objects of the house, is like the consciousness that is looking outwardly. It's looking at the different forms and different objects. But what happens? The light of the lamp also illuminates the lamp itself. The lamp is an object itself, isn't it? So the fact that it illuminates itself, that um, acts as a good example of the self-knower. So this example of the dark house and the lamp that illuminates everything in the house and it also illuminates itself is the example that we have in the text that shows how you can have some other awareness, such as, for example, a uh, sense direct perceiver apprehending the color blue and the self-knower that experiences that, that comes together with that. So every time we have awareness or we have consciousness, it is generated and it is generated in the aspect of knowing, apprehending its object. So this is this the aspect that is looking outwardly and therefore this is classified as the other knower. However, whenever that type of consciousness is generated together with it, Every time that this exists together with it, we have a type of awareness that knows itself, is facing inwardly, and therefore is called the self-knower. So you can see that in what, what we have is that we have two parts or two aspects always generated and abiding and existing together. One will be looking outwardly, and the other one will know this one that is looking outwardly. Another example that we have is the following. Imagine that you have a piece of blue cloth. And on top of that piece of blue cloth, you place a glass, a glass that is totally clear. All right. So what happens is, uh, if we examine at the color and the light that we have here, First of all, you have the blue cloth. The blue cloth has its own color, it illuminates its own light, and that is blue, isn't it? Uh, however, when you put the glass on top of that, you will be perceiving the blue, the blueness, right? The blue that comes from the cloth underneath. So the glass is not white anymore. The glass also appears as blue. So you see, we have two blues happening here. One is the blue that is the natural color of the cloth. And the other one is the aspect of blue that you're getting because the white glass is on top of the blue. So again, that is an example of how you have consciousness and you have the self-knower of that consciousness. So in this example that we give here with the clear glass on top of the blue cloth, so the clear glass has this uh, clarity, isn't it? It's uh, clear, it's see-through. Just when you have water and the water is clear, right? C limpid, clear, see-through, you can see through, see through, isn't it? So similarly, the clear glass has this property where you can see through it. And, but underneath it, you have the blue cloth. And the blue cloth is making everything blue, isn't it? So we have two things operating at the same time. So these two things coexist. So this is how we describe that you have awareness and then you have the self-knower of this awareness. These two things exist together at the same time. However, their function is different. The function of the original awareness is to look outwardly at some object, whilst the function of the self-knower is to look at this awareness and also look at itself. So we find this sentence in the text. It says, because uh, we know it exists because it sees it. Okay, so there are quite a few things involved in this sentence. So, for example, how do we know that the vase exists? We know that the vase exists because um, the sense per perception uh, apprehending vase exists. 
the sense perception apprehending vase, apprehending its vase, and this is telling you that the vase exists. But then the question is, how do we know that awareness apprehending the vase exists? Uh, we know that because we have the self-knower. The self-knower is the one who, that tells us that there is awareness apprehending vas. that that type of awareness exists. And then the question is, do we need, do we need another awareness to tell us that the self-knower exists? And the answer to that is no, because self-knower also knows itself. So um, when we talk about the self-knower, it will be safe to say that, you know, if someone asks you what is a self-knower, you say self-knower is a type of awareness that is looking or is apprehending internal awareness. Okay. Now, just because one awareness is apprehending another awareness, that is not enough to qualify it to say that it is self-knower. Why? Because if you said it, if you say it like this, you're going to run into problem with the higher perception that knows other sentient beings' minds. Okay. So higher perception that knows the mind of someone else, it means here I am, and then there's another sentient being out there. And my awareness is able to know their mind. Their mind is awareness. Their awareness is an internal object, is not an external object, okay? So if you just say that self-knower is awareness that knows awareness, then it would follow, and that would be problematic, that higher perception that knows the minds of other sentient beings is also self-knower. Okay, so here, the those who accept self-knowers have to give an answer to this question. So what, what type of uh, awareness is high perception knowing the mind of others? So we come to this problematic question, but those who assert the existence of self-knower they go back and they say, no, listen, when we describe self-knower, what is it that we said? We said that the self-knower is a type of awareness that is looking at awareness, but it is one in nature with this awareness. It's not different substance from this awareness. And they coexist, like when one is generated, the self-knower is generated. However that abides, the self-knower abides with this. When that stops, self-knower is also going to stop. When you talk about the case of higher perception, knowing the mind of another sentient being, that other mind, that other awareness is not close by. It's not an awareness that is same nature with the self-knower, is, is, is something that is removed. Also, there, it doesn't mean that the self-knower has to begin, has to abide, and then it has to cease, it has to stop when that other mind of the other sentient being operates, right? So they say this is a different case. Self-knower knows awareness that is nearby, it's one in nature with this, and they coexist in terms of time. Higher perception of the mind of another sentient being knows an awareness that is out there. Also, those who assert the existence of the self-knower, they explain this point further. They say, we have uh, awareness, and we have the self-knower that experiences that awareness and actually is one in nature with that awareness. And the way that the self-knower operates here is by means of all dualistic appearances having subsided. So when dualistic sub appearances have sub subsided, it means that other appearances of other conventional objects do not appear in this self-knower. When you give the example of higher perception knowing the mind of another sentient being, 
the mind of this other sentient being is something else, right? And also it is something which is distant. In the, when we use here the expression that dualistic appearances have subsided, it means there is no distance between the object that is observed and the subject that is observing. It means that actually the, the two things exist upon the same place, the same basis. They are together. There's no distance between them. Whereas when you say, I have awareness here that knows the mind of another sentient being, there's quite a big distance between these two. Same thing when we have eye awareness that apprehends a vase out there. There's a distance between the eye and the vase out there, right? Here they say, when we talk about self-knower, there is no distance. They have to be without distance as and they describe this as dualistic appearances have subsided it means nothing else will appear to this self-knower this self-knower is only looking at this awareness so if we look at the definition of the self-knower the definition of self-knower is um okay in Okay, in Tibetan you can say it very abbreviated. In English we cannot say it as abbreviated. So the definition is that which has the aspect of the apprehender. Now in Tibetan you can call it apprehender aspect. Okay, in English we say that which has the aspect of the apprehender. And this actually explains what is happening. You have the self-knower must have a particular aspect. It, it must looking, it must it must seeing something, it must perceiving something. What is it perceiving? It is perceiving an apprehender. The apprehender is a subject. In other words, is awareness. Okay. So if in the case where we have awareness apprehending blue. Not, not uh, self-knower, awareness apprehending blue. So when you have awareness apprehending blue, what aspect appears? It's the blue, isn't it? So now this is called having the aspect of the apprehended. The apprehended is the apprehended object, the external object. So this is for awareness that is looking outwardly. It has the aspect of the apprehended object. Here we're talking about self-knower. And the definition of the self-knower is that the, it has the aspect of the apprehender, meaning it has the aspect of awareness that is apprehending something else. Okay, so we describe here the self-knower and we say the self-knower has the aspect of the apprehender. Now, this apprehender is awareness that is apprehending, let's say, form or color blue or whatever. But they define this and say, when we say it has the aspect of the apprehender, this apprehender must be in the same continuum, right? So, in who, who, who's, whomever's continuum you generate awareness apprehending form, it has to be within the same continuum that you have the self-knower. They cannot be in different continuum because if it is in different continua, then we have this problem of awareness knowing the mind of another being. Awareness that knows the, the mind of another person are in different continuum different mental continuum, isn't it? They are not within the same continuum. So by defining it, by clarifying it, they are excluding this possibility of talking about higher perception, knowing the mind of someone else. Okay, so question to you. We have been describing the self-knower for a good half an hour, one hour. So uh, when we say self-knower, this self, 
what does it refer to? Does it refer to external object or does it refer to inner awareness? Okay, so if it is knowing inner awareness, does it mean that anything that knows awareness has to be a self-knower? <laughs> Give us an example. Okay, so we say that higher perception, knowing the mind of another sentient being is not self-knower. So Gisha says, tell me here, you know, what is the difference and what makes mind awareness that knows the mind of another person not being um self-knower and what makes awareness that apprehends awareness apprehending blue being self-knower what's the difference between these two okay so you can see here first of all there is the issue of distance you know how far away is the thing that you are observing if you're if you're observing the mind of another sentient being, <laughs> that is very far away. In the case of self-knower, there is no distance. And also we say uh, self-knower is observing something that is within one's own continuum, whilst the mind of another being is in another continuum. And as we have explained, in the case of self-knower, it is same substance. Whatever it is observing, it's one's within one's own continuum. There is no distance. They are same substance. Okay. So we have mentioned a few features here, a few characteristics of self-knower. How many could you enumerate? All right. Number one, when we talk about self-knower, the self from amongst observing outer um, things or inner awareness, it is observing inner awareness that's number one mm. okay is it enough that it is observing inner awareness no it must be observing inner awareness within one's own continuum number two mm. the third characteristic is that self-knower and whatever awareness it is focusing there must be same substance, same nature, generated, abiding, and ceasing together. Also, self-knower must be something that is looking inwardly. It cannot look outwardly. Another characteristic, self-knower, and whatever awareness it is observing, there should be no appearance of distance no distance between them another characteristic is that when self-knower is observing is looking at this awareness is looking at it in a way where dualistic appearances have totally subsided it means no other conventional phenomenon appears to it the only thing that appears to it is this awareness that is looking at right so it's like you enter echo pose and only one thing appears to you okay the seventh characteristic is that self-knower must have the aspect of the apprehender and by saying this we come to the definition really of the self-knower so here we have made the distinction between the apprehender er and the apprehended ed the apprehender is the subject, is the object possessor. So therefore, it refers to awareness. So when you say that something has the aspect of the apprehender, it means it has the aspect of awareness. It means the object that it is observing is awareness. Okay, so when we have this definition between object and subject, right, or the subject is also referred to as the object possessor, the subject or the object possessor is the apprehender. And the object is the apprehended. The apprehended object can be, for example, form, sound, smells, things, things like that. Okay? So with 
But when we make this twofold distinction between the apprehended object, sounds, forms, and so forth, and the apprehender, um, the apprehender, the subject is mostly awareness. There are some other things that come in that. Okay, so we have defined self-knower, is self-knower awareness, self-knower direct perceiver. Uh, does it come into your mind? Do you do you get it? Okay, so now we have an idea of what self-knower is. However, we have to prove it. You know, what proves the existence of self-knower? So they say that the fact that we have memory, we generate memory, is a proof of self um, of the existence of self-knowing awareness. So, for example, you have eye awareness, and your eye awareness sees a particular object. And later on, you have this thought, you have this memory, and it says, oh, earlier on, I saw this and this object. The fact that you are able to generate that memory is because the self-knower had experience your eye awareness seeing the object. Mm. So uh, we don't have to look very hard to find a proof for self-knower. The fact that we we know from experience that we have certain experiences. So for example, you can say, I have experienced attachment or I have experienced anger. I have been angry. It means I had the experience of that. So we have generated attachment, right? So that the fact that we can remember or we can be aware that we had an experience of being attached to something is because self-knower was there experiencing the awareness that generated attachment. So we have the experience. And you, you will know that when you have an experience and you have a particular feeling, like at that particular time, I felt uh, angry or at that particular time, I had this certain feeling. This is a personal experience, isn't it? It's not your experience, it's my experience, isn't it? So this is the self-knower who establishes that. Mm. So we have a feeling. What is the feeling? Feeling is awareness. But then there is someone who experiences the feeling. So we say I had the experience of that feeling. So the one who experiences the feeling of awareness is the self-knower. Okay, so now in terms of classification of the direct perceivers, we have three types of direct perceivers. We have direct perceivers that are prime cognizers. We have direct perceivers that are subsequent cognizers. And we have direct perceivers uh, that are a type of awareness to which the object appears but is not ascertained. So we will explain this later in greater detail, but just a brief introduction. What is this type of awareness? to which the object appears but is not ascertained. You can understand it through an example. So you are in a shop and you're looking at a particular object. You are fascinated with this object. So really your attention, your main attention is looking at this object. And at that time, someone is talking to you. All right. Later on, uh, you find out that you're not sure uh, what the, if someone talked to you or what did the person say to you. Like you were a bit inattentive, wasn't it? It's not that your ear awareness stopped working. Actually, you your ear awareness heard the sound. The sound clearly appeared. You could hear, like you didn't go deaf. You could hear. However, you didn't ascertain. You have no certainty about what was said at that particular time. It means you didn't realize the object. You didn't establish, you didn't prove, you didn't uh, ascertain. You don't have certainty about this object. So the object clearly appears, 
but you're not sure about the object. The object awareness to which the object appears, but is not ascertained. So we can see in terms of classification of different types of self-knower, we only have uh, three. We have self-knowers uh, that are prime cognizers. Uh, now, these days, the term prime cognizer is um, mostly translated as a valid awareness or valid cognizer. Anyway, the term tsema uh, refers to the first moment of realizing the object. So you have the first moment of realizing the object. So this can be self-knower. Then every other moment after the first moment, so from the second moment onwards, is called a subsequent cognizer. Subsequent because you are already you are realizing something that has already been realized in the previous moment, the first moment. Okay, so we have the prime cognizer, we have the subsequent cognizer, and finally we have awareness to which the object appears but is not ascertained. So the self-knower can be any of these three. Okay, so to give you an example, we have uh, the prime cognizer of uh, a sense direct perceiver. So the prime cognizer here is telling you that it is the first moment of this direct sense direct perceiver. Because you have this first moment of sense direct perceiver, there will be a self-knower that experiences that. So what is that going to be? It will going to be a prime cognizer, self-knower, okay, because it is the self-moment. Then we can have the second or third or any other subsequent moment of the direct sense perceiver, Right, so in this case is subsequent direct perceiver. So together with the subsequent direct perceiver, you will have a subsequent self knower that experiences that. Okay, then we have the third type of self knower, which is self knower that does not realize its object. This is synonymous with self knower. That is a mind to which the object appears, but is not um, ascertained. Okay, we want to give an example of this, the third one. So we know that in the case of the mental direct perceiver, we have mental direct perceiver and we have the self-knower of that mental direct perceiver. The mental direct perceiver is something that is generated for the briefest of moments. And because it is such a brief moment, actually, it is not realized. It is a type of awareness that appears but is not ascertained. So this will be an example of self, the self-knower of mental direct perception. It's the example of self-knower that is a mind to which awareness appears but is not ascertained. Mm -hmm. Okay, so... When we talk about the self-knower, you know, the self-knower is always experience awareness. So how we're going to classify the self-knower is going to depend oh, on self-knower always experiences awareness. So how we're going to classify the self-knower is going to depend on how we're going to classify this awareness, okay? So if this awareness is... A prime cognizer, if we're talking about the first moment that uh, this awareness realizes something, then the self-knower that experiences this awareness is also going to be classified as a prime cognizer. If that awareness is subsequent cognizer, then the self-knower is also going to be classified as subsequent cognizer. If this awareness is awareness that was not really paying attention. So it's an awareness to which the object appeared but is not ascertained. Then, then the self-knower that experiences this awareness is also going to be classified as awareness to which 
the mind appears but is not ascertained okay so you can see the pattern whatever is the awareness however you classify this awareness you also have to classify the self nowhere accordingly they go together okay but now there is another question okay so what about awareness um let's say you have the case of awareness that uh, sees the white snow mountain as blue. All right. So because it is awareness, every time we have awareness, we must have the self-knower of this awareness. So now the question is, what is the self-knower of this awareness uh, going to be? Is it going to be prime cognizer, subsequent cognizer? Is it going to be awareness to which the object appears, but it's not ascertained or not? So here, actually, the answers vary quite a bit. And it seems to be that depending on the quality of the mind, you have awareness observing something, isn't it? So if you have good quality of observation, meaning you're paying attention, all your attention, all the energy of the mind is going there, then they, they say, you know, most people say that this has to be classified as prime cognizer, as valid awareness. However, if you're not paying attention with the full force of your mind, in most cases, they say it will be a case where the object appears but is not ascertained. So when you are actually fully paying attention to something, fully apprehending something, and it doesn't matter if what you are apprehending is right or wrong. So for example, let's say that you are apprehending uh, self-grasping or you're apprehending grasping at permanence, right? And, and you're fully paying attention to this, right? It doesn't matter if that thing exists or not. It doesn't matter if you're wrong, but you fully, fully pay attention to this. Then the self-knower that will be associated with this type of grasping awareness has to be classified as prime cognizer, valid awareness. So as you can see here, the criteria that we have to use is the quality of the mind you have mind you have mentality paying attention observing something so the quality the force of that mind will determine what sort what sort of self-knower we have and if you have the mind paying full attention and it is the first moment then we're going to say that this is prime cognizer of valid awareness if it's not the first moment, still paying full attention, but it's second, third, subsequent moment, it's going to be a subsequent cognizer. If the mind is not paying full attention, it will be a mind to which the object appears, but is not ascertained. So as you can see here with the self-knower, um, if we're going through the main classification of being prime cognizer, subsequent cognizer, mind to which the object appears but it's not ascertained, we are going to follow the class, we're going to look at the awareness itself. But at other times, really, you have to be a bit more flexible but because there are many other types, class, well, classifications that are not included here, different types of awareness. So you have to be um, kind of flexible but once you understand how we, the criteria that allows you to classify self-knower, you will be able to place it properly. Previously, we gave the example of eye awareness that perceives the white snow mountain as blue. Now, what type of awareness is this? It's mistaken awareness and it's wrong awareness. Is that, is that going to mean that actually the self-knower of this awareness has to be classified as a wrong awareness? The answer to that is no. It could be correct in terms of the awareness that it is observing, observing with, with full attention and so forth. So it doesn't necessarily mean 
that the self-cognizer has to be classified as wrong awareness. Anyway, Geshe says, I know we started talking about here about prime cognizer, subsequent cognizer, um, mind to which the object appears, but it's not ascertained. Now, later on in the text, we will have a thorough, proper presentation of this because these are important types of mind to understand, important types of awareness. So when we get to that point, Gesha says I will explain it very thoroughly. Okay, so Gesha was saying, I hope that today with today's presentation, we have clarified um, what the self-knowers are. We have looked at um, the, let's say, you know, there are particular features of the self-knowers. We have seen how self-knowers operate, how they engage the objects, and we have seen the classification. So we say we have prime, prime cognizers that are self-knowers. We have uh, subsequent cognizers that they are self-knowers. And we have uh, minds to whom the object appears, but it's not ascertained, and they are self-knowers. So hopefully we have understood what the self-knower is. Okay. Having said this, now comes this debate. Do we have self-knower in the continuum of an Arya Buddha? An Arya Buddha has awareness, isn't it? And we have said every time there is awareness, there must be a self-knower together with this awareness. So, for example, an Arya Buddha has eye awareness. So if the Arya Buddha has eye awareness, it must have, that eye awareness must have self-knower. Okay, since we're talking about a Buddha, isn't it, the question is that, is this self-knower, does this self-knower know all phenomena? It's omniscient, right? Is this self-knower a knower of all phenomena? We have to say yes, it knows all phenomena. If it knows all phenomena, isn't it the case that it knows, it must know all external phenomena, forms and so forth, isn't it? But if we say yes to this, then some, you know, the, the one who is debating with us will say, but didn't you tell me that the self knower cannot look outside, is not engaging external objects, is not comprehending forms and so forth? Didn't you tell me that self-knower is only looking inwardly, only looking inwardly? Now you tell me you have self-knower that knows everything. It looks everywhere. So what are we going to say? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> is it because they have higher perception? So that, that's, that's why they know everything. So, for them, the self, the self knower, and the higher perception is equivalent. Okay, so you know you mentioned here higher perception. Okay, now higher perception. We, as I mentioned before, higher perception. You should not mix it with self knower. The way that higher perception operates, the way that higher perception knows, comprehends, realizes things is different from how the self-knower sees, experiences, operates, okay? Whether we are talking about higher perception in the continuum of an Arya Buddha, whether you're talking about higher perception um, while someone is still a learner, or whether you're talking about higher perception in the continuum of an ordinary being and so forth, it is different from self-knower. Self-knower is generated automatically as soon as you have awareness. You don't need to do anything to establish the self-knower. To establish higher perception, actually, you need to do quite a lot of things. First of all, you have to establish calm abiding. And then after calm abiding, you from calm abiding, you have to have the actual absorption, the actual state of absorption. And then by relying on the actual state of absorption, you can begin developing the higher perception. So higher perception takes a bit, 
a bit of effort to establish self nowhere comes automatically. Do I have eye awareness? Together with that, automatically, I have self nowhere. Okay. But in your answer, you said something that the Buddha has, you know, is so high up, so has reached such a high level. So there's something there in that part of your answer that we can work with. Okay, you are talking very, very so softly. I heard that, okay, we have the threefold classification of self knower prime cognizer, subsequent cognizer, um, mind to which the object appears but is not ascertained. Okay, and then you said something about uh, since, since there is a prime cognizer and a subsequent cognizer is being presented this way, shouldn't there be another? one that is supposed to be awareness to which an object appears, but only partially ascertained. Shouldn't there be another one that's missing? So another type of awareness to which the object appears and is ascertained. Partially. Uh, partially. Yeah. Shouldn't there be another that is supposed to be missing? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So actually, this third category, awareness or mind to which the object appears but is not ascertained, is not a small category. It's a very big category. Because even if it is a little bit not ascertained or half ascertained or totally not ascertained, right? As long as it is not ascertained, uh, by any fraction, we are going to classify it in this category. And you can see that actually according to the strength of your mind, according to the occasion, depending on different individuals, we will have different types of this category. And what appears but is not ascertained for me is and let's say also it appears, but it's not ascertained for you, it's not going to have the same level of non-ascertainment. But as long as something appears, but is not ascertained by a small fraction, middle fraction, great fraction, totally not ascertained, we take all of this and we put it in one category. So in there, you have all the shades. You have many, 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 many types in the third one. So let's go back to clarify that question about the self-knower in the continuum of an Arya Buddha. Part of your answer was that an Arya, an Arya Buddha has reached a high level. And actually, this is the best answer that we can give in this case. Obviously, there is self-knower in the continuum of the Buddha. The Buddha has eye awareness, isn't it? However, the Buddha is a special case. So keep this word here, special case. Special case means it is exceptional. It is an, an exception. So in the case of the Buddha, the Buddha has omniscience. So it means one type of awareness of the Buddha is capable of realizing all objects that exist. So each type of awareness that the Buddha has is omniscient with respect to all objects. And why does the Buddha has this uh, exceptional power, exceptional capacity? Because the Buddha is someone who has completed the two accumulations and has totally removed the two types of obscurations. So if we are examining, if we bring into discussion here what happens in the knowledge of the Buddha, in the awareness of the Buddha, the omniscience of the Buddha, the self, the self nowhere in the continuum of the Buddha, it does, you know, the rule, the, the same rules do not apply to the Buddha and to us ordinary beings. Actually, there is no comparison. As, as they say in Tibetan, is the difference between the earth and the sky. So we are ordinary beings here in the earth. And let's uh, 
you know, the rules that apply to us do not apply to the omniscient awareness of the Buddha. So if that comes up in debate, you cannot apply the usual rules of it is pervasive, it is necessarily the case that it has to look inwardly and so on and so forth. Okay, so let's first uh, try to understand the self-knower in the case of us, ordinary beings, and obviously later on it will be very good to understand the omniscience of the Buddha, how it is established, and the self-knower that will come in the case of the Buddha. So the answer, high level, he has reached high level, is the best answer in this case. Thank you, we'll stop here. <laughs> okay, so thank you everyone. We conclude today and it seems everyone was listening very attentively and enthusiastically. No one fell asleep, <laughs> like <laughs> collapsed to the floor. So everyone was listening well. Thank you for being attentive. <laughs> Kishwa says, okay, my memory not very good. We did the mandala after the dedication. Mm -hmm.